Gurgak, his girlfriend, and his brother were hanging out at his girlfriend's house. Gurgak wanted to show off his pain tolerance, so he casually put clothespins on his nipples. It was summer, so he was only wearing a tank top. When he removed the clothespins, they noticed there was a very small wet spot on his shirt. It was that fateful day that the three of them learned that men can lactate. When Emoji was seven years old, he went to a superhero-themed kids' party. The birthday boy's mom had arranged for a very special guest to show up. While Emoji and his friends were eating ice cream, Superman suddenly walked through the door. They rushed over to meet their hero, but one kid at the party just stood at the back without so much as a smile. He soon pulled out a pistol and pointed it at Superman. The adults screamed and pulled their kids away. The kid with the gun said if the guy in the costume really was Superman, the bullet would bounce right off him. It took 15 minutes, but the man dressed as Superman eventually talked the kid into handing over to the gun. Police arrived and talked to everyone about gun safety. It could have gone really bad, but in the end, Emoji found it a surprisingly fun party. His favorite part was the cake. One day, when he was a freshman in high school, James Shark was in his physical education class with some friends. They were messing around because it was a free day, so they could do whatever they wanted. One of his friends noticed that someone had dropped a cup of hot chocolate on the floor and dared someone to look it up. He went on to say that they would pay the person $2. Wanting attention, James Shark volunteered to be the licker. He hurried his ass to where the spill was, kneeled on the dirty gym floor, and licked it up. Although he never got the $2, he still got the attention he craved. James Shark is also grateful that he didn't get sick from licking the gym floor. Elbin's cringiest school memory was a time he and his four friends formed a gang. They called themselves the Tactical Toasters and would patrol the school grounds wearing bandanas over their faces. They made some cringy homemade badges and would hang around the playground giving other kids a hard time. Looking back, Helbin realizes he was just another cringy little punk. Zaragonba was hanging out with his friends one day, and they were passing around some really cheesy jokes. It was Zaragonba's turn, so he stood up, he cleared his throat, and he said, What cheese do you use to lure a bear? Cam on bear. He thought it was hilarious, so he started laughing uncontrollably like a maniac. And then suddenly his crush walked up behind him and stared while he had tears of laughter rolling down his double chin. Nobody else was laughing, and he looked like a insane person. So she never spoke to him again. The scariest place Honeybits has ever been is in a house on top of a hill in the middle of the woods. There was a story that a woman who did witchcraft lived there. And being the idiot that she was, Honeybits went. When she got there, it smelled like dead animal. There were old broken toys everywhere and the windows were all shattered. She looked down the hall and saw something hunched on its back. Walking towards her, Honeybits screamed and ran all the way home. She had nightmares about the place and doesn't go into those woods anymore. The election at Doopy School was coming up for school president, and everyone who wanted to be elected had to write a speech and read it in front of the whole school. All the students would then have to vote on who they thought was best, and the person with the highest vote would be elected. One day, a student walked up to Doopy and offered her $40 to make a mockery out of that election by running for president and giving a terrible speech. She said, Sure, no problem. I'll do that. Election time came, and Doopy wrote a fake speech and turned it in. Then, instead of reading her speech, she sang Wrecking Ball really loud in front of the whole school. I came in like a wrecking ball. She then walked it off like it was nothing. Since almost everyone voted for her, the school had to announce over the speakers to not vote for Doopy. She was still paid the 40 bucks, but that year they didn't get a president. She didn't even get in trouble. Doopy was at a Halloween party sleepover, and she suggested they make a prank call. Her friend was a little hesitant to do it, but she said yes. She gave Doopy a number to call and she called it. When the person picked up, he sounded familiar, but being the naive girl she was, Doopy continued with the prank call. When he asked, Hello, who is this? She decided to reply with, Hey babe, want me to come over again so we can have fun like last time? He then said with a shaky voice, Um, excuse me? Her friend then started giggling, and Doopy just took it as her laughing at the prank. She then said, Babe, you remember last night, right? When we fucked? She then heard him whimpering a bit, and then respond with, Oh, uh, I'm just gonna hang up. And then the line went dead. 
When she turned to her friend, she was laughing like crazy. She said, Do you know who that was? Doopy shook her head and said, No, not a clue. Her friend laughed and said, It was your crush. She then froze and face palmed. Dima has a cat named Zaffy who is three years old, a gift from her boyfriend and his mother. When Zaffy was seven months old, she was sent to stay at Shima's boyfriend's house so that the cat could learn how to chase mice, many of which were terrorizing the house. The next day, the family woke up to see Shafi tossing a half-dead mouse back and forth. Then, out of nowhere, Shafi just started teabagging the mouse over and over. The mouse was barely alive and had one eye popped out. Shima, her boyfriend, and his mother didn't know what to do. One time, a customer came into the pet store where James Shark worked, wanting to buy a lot of goldfish. One of James Shark's co-workers went to help her. He watched as the customer told his co-worker that she wanted certain goldfish and not just any individual ones. Catching goldfish was hard enough, but catching individual ones was a lot harder. James Shark's co-worker spent half an hour trying to catch these specific goldfish for the customer, getting wet in the process. Finally, the customer took the full bag of goldfish to the register where James Shark was standing. After he rang them up, the customer said, you know what? I don't think I'll buy any goldfish today. Then she left, having wasted everybody's time. One time, Dolan's local youth group hiked to a haunted house that was owned by Count de Charles Lopinot, a rich slave master who ran a cocoa estate who also had a horse farm and a graveyard for his slaves and his dead wife. During the night, they heard a whisper in French and frequent horse cries, so the group went out to see what was creating the noise. When they heard the whispering stop, which was by a cave where the alleged firewoman or Sukiant lived, they didn't find anything. Heading back to the camp at 3 a.m., they saw a quick flash of fire on the hillside. Then what seemed to be the silhouette of a man on a horse yelling in French at them on a hillside for what seemed to be like two seconds. As Dolan and his group got up to the top, there was nothing. In the morning, as they broke down camp, one of Dolan's friends had a huge purple mark on his back and his tent was destroyed. Dolan was 19 when he was in driving school and had a crush on a girl in his class. When it was time for the driving test, he climbed into the car and saw her. Wanting to impress her, he started up and yelled, Hey, you wanna see something cool? She said, Yes? And being dumb, he tried to flip the car on the fence by driving really fast towards it. The driving teacher screamed, what are you doing? Dolan hit the fence and broke the car, but she did date him for being brave. One time, Gurgak filed a sexual harassment claim against a co-worker. He kept making sexual advances towards him despite Gurgak telling him he wasn't into guys. The claim ended up going nowhere. A few months later, that same co-worker organized a Christmas party at his house. Gurgak said he wasn't interested, but his co-worker begged until he agreed to attend. Gurgak figured that he wouldn't have anything to worry about since the rest of his team would be there. Once he talked to that co-worker, it turned out that they had a lot in common. Now they have a mutual understanding that goes deeper than anything superficial. So the co-worker Gurgak once filed a sexual harassment claim against became a fairly close friend of his. How sweet. One time, Civil Spider and his friends decided it would be really funny to buy cases of poppers and have drinks in the woods in the middle of winter. When they arrived, they found a Native American event set up in the wood with props like giant teepees and animal pelts. They decided to go into a teepee, wrap themselves in animal pelts, and get drunk. At one point, Civil Spider peed in the fire pit inside the teepee. He then ran into the woods completely drunk to search for a hunting spear. He ended up running away and getting lost. His friends found him at the entrance to the subway, covered in his own vomit. He had cuts all over him from the trees and bushes he ran through, and he was still wearing the animal pelts when he took the train home. Recently at lunch, Hellbent heard something weird from a girl walking towards a group he was sitting near. She went over there and said to the group with a completely straight face, I have the desire for you to have dirty, unprotected sex with an anime bear. After she said that, she dabbed. And then she walked away. Hellbent doesn't eat lunch near that group anymore. One day in science class in 8th grade, me and a friend were mucking around making paper aeroplanes when we should really have been studying. We hadn't noticed that the teacher had snuck up behind us, and just as we were about to float another plane, he grabbed my friend by the collar and took him outside. No one was really sure what was going to happen because we mucked around a little bit, but it's just fun and games. Our rooms all have glass doors so we could see what was going on until the teacher took him around the corner. 
I snuck out because I was curious and because I was an accomplice and really I should know what was coming my way next. When the teacher thought they were successfully out of sight, I saw him kick my friend's leg so as to break it at the kneecap. He then pushed him down a set of concrete stairs that were outside. I rushed back inside the classroom in case he saw me. I didn't want to be caught. A couple of seconds later, the teacher followed me. The teacher came in a few seconds later looking really flustered and he said, Oh my gosh, Zara Gumbar's friend has fallen down the stairs. Everyone come and help. We all rushed outside to see my friend lying at the bottom of the stairs, his leg bending in a way that it should not be bending and with all sorts of cuts and scrapes as he'd fallen down the stairs. When we confronted the teacher about it a few months later, he said that we'd be expelled if we tried to bring the story out. A few months later, he moved to another school anyway. The most desperate thing Spences ever did to impress someone was going down a very steep hill on a bike. She liked a boy named Tolop, who lived in her neighborhood and hung out with him from time to time. They lived in a neighborhood that had a really, really steep hill. One day, they were playing outside when Spences asked, Do you want to see me go down the hill on a bike? Tola wanted to see it, so she went to her house, grabbed her bike, and walked back to him. She got on the bike and sped down the hill. Well, she went way faster than expected and screamed, Ah, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Spences ended up losing control of the bike and ran right into a car. She flew onto the hood and the alarm went off. The owner of the car came out of her house and Spences and Tolop explained what happened. The woman forgave them and Spences started dating Tolop because he thought he was really brave of her to do what she did. They still laugh about it to this day. One time, Zara Gumba's girlfriend took him on a four-hole drive to meet her parents. They planned to stay there for three nights, with Zara Gumba sleeping in the guest room. Meeting the parents went well, and the relationship seemed stronger than ever. Zara Gamba went to bed thinking everything was great, but at 3 a.m. his girlfriend woke him up. She told him she didn't want to see him anymore, and that he should leave first thing in the morning. She didn't give him any other reason, just that she'd been thinking about this for a while. Saragamba was so mad. He couldn't understand why she made him meet her parents when she secretly wanted to break up. To make matters worse, her dad had to drive Saragamba home because they'd taken his girlfriend's car to get there and she refused to go back with him. Saragamba will never forget those four hours of awkward torture driving with his ex-girlfriend's dad. The dumbest thing my brother used to believe was that if he stood perfectly still for a long time, he would become a mannequin. He probably started believing this when he was walking through a department store one day with our mum and he noticed two women standing next to a clothed mannequin. One of the women seemed to be holding perfectly still. He thought that she was actually trying to become a mannequin. From that day onwards, for the next several years, he made sure not to stand still unless he absolutely had to. Tollop loves telling little lies to his brother because he is very gullible. One time, Tolop told him that boogers were actually dead brain matter. He told him when our brain gets bigger, it sheds its skin, that's what you see coming out of your nose. Tolop's brother thought this was amazing. He asked if eating your own boogers makes you smarter, and Tolop was like, yeah, absolutely. Now Tolop's brother eats three square meals of boogers every day. When Hellbent was 14, he was talking to his friend during church service. They found a joke on Hellbent's phone that made them both burst out laughing. The pastor overheard them and said, if something's that funny, you should share it with everyone. So, Halbin went over to the front of the service, took the microphone, and said, What do you call a five-year-old with no friends? The audience stared at Halbin nervously, waiting for the punchline. A Sandy Hook survivor! The entire audience gasped, and Halbin and his family were escorted out of the church and told never to come back again. M. Kyle M. was walking home from a bar in the middle of the night when he decided to take a shortcut down an embankment. It was so dark, and M. Kyle M. was so drunk that he didn't notice when he wandered straight into a river. After a while, he looked down and freaked out because his hands and legs had disappeared. When he raised his invisible hands to his eyes, they suddenly reappeared dripping wet. He soon realized he'd been wading through a river and had to climb up a steep bank. The next morning, M. Kalem's whole body ached and his clothes were completely ruined. He vowed never to take a drunken shortcut again. When Melissa was 10, she was at recess when a kid in kindergarten brought a little puppy outside. The puppy ran and when it did, the kid said, <laughs> Run, bitch, run. If you don't run, you won't get these snacky wackies, bitch. Melissa went to the kid and said, Don't call your dog that. It's rude. But the kid said, Well, my daddy told me that a girl dog is called a bitch, so we call our dog bitch. Melissa laughed so hard she almost choked on the sandwich that she was eating. When Honeybits was 11, 
she and her family went camping in Wales. They arrived so late that they pretty much put up their tents and went straight to bed. Before going to sleep, Honeybits decided to take a Snapchat selfie. As she went through her different filters, she noticed that the camera was detecting two faces. Hers and someone, or something, next to her. Honeybits was creeped out, but shrugged it off as a glitch. Later on, she got up to use the bathroom. On the way to the toilet block, she heard what sounded like a child sobbing. This was strange because there was no one else staying at this campsite. She followed the sound and saw a young girl on her knees crying. Honeybits asked her if she was okay, and the girl looked up, giving her a blank, soulless stare. The mysterious girl said, You're the same, and disappeared before Honeybits could find out what she meant. Melissa was walking by a Starbucks when she saw a crazy homeless man. He was acting as though he had a dog and was holding him by the leash, bent down to pet his invisible dog and gave it an invisible treat. It was really weird for Melissa to see, but then the man walked to a trash can in front of Starbucks, put his hand in the trash, grabbed a cup and started drinking it. Mmm, yummy. Hellbent once went on a date that went really well. Shortly after the date, he had to have an operation that left him in the hospital for a few months. When he finally got out of the hospital, he asked the girl out again, and she said yes. They went to a Chili's, and things were going well. Hellbent's stomach started making noises, but he kept trying to ignore it. Just after their meals arrived, Hellbent couldn't hold back anymore and vomited blood all over the table and passed out. He woke up in the hospital and texted his date to say sorry. He never got a reply. A lot of kids think clouds are made of cotton candy, but animations had an even weirder explanation. She thought that all the clouds in the sky were specifically made inside factories. Every morning she'd see white smoke coming out of the tops of factories as she was driven to school. That's where she thought the clouds came from. She even once got into an argument with her teacher about it. Helvin got up to get a snack one night and walked down the stairs when he immediately got the feeling that something wasn't right. So he used his phone as a torch and looked around. Through the window, he could see a pitch black face staring at him with eyes that seemed to just be holes going straight through its head. It had its hands on the window, it smiled at him before sinking out of sight. He went closer to the window and he saw it walking off on all fours. It was abnormally thin, and once it was down the driveway, he saw it glance back at him before a gust of wind blew snow in front of it. Luckily, he never saw it again, nor did he want to. Once in 10th grade biology, Shima got detention for being 5 minutes late. This seems like it makes sense, but here's the kicker. Shima was in the main office and they'd run out of late passes, so they told her, tell your teacher to call down here if she has any doubts about where you were. So, being the obedient feline she is, Shima told him and he refused to call down because she shouldn't have gone before his class. Public school is definitely a weird place. My brother is a nice guy. When he was 19, he let a girl stay with him who was down in her luck. He didn't try anything pervy or anything, she slept on the couch while he slept in his bed. Things went smoothly during the day, but at night they got a little... weird. Every once in a while, Dolly would wake up in the night to see this girl standing in his doorway. She would just watch him. Dolan casually brushed it off, but he still found it creepy as hell. One day he pretended to stay asleep to see what she did. While peeking slightly, he saw her take off her pyjama pants, squat down, and take a huge shit in his doorway. Dolan was absolutely stunned. It smelled so bad. When she was finished, she seemed to snap out of her weird trance and hurried to clean it up before anyone noticed. He couldn't figure out why she would do this. Needless to say, she didn't stick around for long after that. Gooby has a weird fear of napkins and dry hands. She can't touch napkins unless they're wet napkins. If anyone uses napkins or rubs their dry hands and Gooby hears the sound of it, she starts to have a panic attack. Gooby has had it since forever and she has to put lotion on a lot to avoid the terrible feeling of dry hands. Pringle's favorite hobby is digging holes in his front yard. One time he finished a massive hole and threw his spade behind him without looking. Smashed his front window and made a huge noise. Thinking quickly, Pringle buried the spade in the hole to hide the evidence. When Pringle's mom came out to see what all the noise was, she saw glass everywhere and screamed. Pringle started to confess but accidentally blurted out a huge ridiculous lie. See, mom, what happened was, 
uh, a guy named Steve hopped out of his van and threw a rock at our window. Pringle's mom didn't believe him, granted him for lying. But all of a sudden they saw a guy across the street walking towards a courier van. His name badge said Steve. Pringle pointed at him and shouted, Tim! It's Steve! Pringle's mom stormed up to him and started swearing at him and abusing him. She later complained to the courier company who fired Steve, gave him money to replace the window. Pringle's grounding got lifted and his mom even gave him an Xbox because the company had overpaid them. It was easily the best lie Pringle had ever told. Meanwhile, Steve is probably lying in a gutter somewhere. One day, Tolop was hanging out with a group of people at an event to try and make some friends. They talked about themselves and any issues they had. When they got to him, Tolop said, I have trouble talking with people because I have Asperger's and... But he was cut off by a man next to him who started to laugh. Everyone in the group looked at him when Tolop said, Excuse me. But the man laughed even harder and said, Asperger's? What the hell is an Asperger? Do you spend your time eating burgers out of people's asses? Tolop was disturbed, disgusted, and offended. He stared at the man for a moment before saying, It's a form of autism and I have a speech impediment, you ass. The man just mumbled that he was sorry and wouldn't look at him for the rest of the event. When Nick Siam worked at the deli counter in a grocery store, a customer demanded that every slice of meat or cheese or anything else be separated by a piece of deli paper. Then they proceeded to order three pounds of super thin cut ham. It was well over 100 slices of meat and they wanted Nick Siam to put paper between every single slice. When she was in high school, Princess Proton and her friends were hanging out during lunch break, like they did every day, when suddenly, a group of guys appeared and started what looked like a huge fake orgy. They were moaning vigorously, like they were acting out a loud gay porno, but they were still fully clothed. Princess Proton facepalmed, and her friends sat there with their eyebrows 10 meters in the air, completely speechless. After a short while, the guys stopped, laughed it off, and continued on their way. Princess Proton rolled her eyes while their friends were looking at each other, completely perplexed. The weirdest prank call I ever made was when I called Domino's Pizza. I gave him the old school joke, Is your refrigerator running? And then they answered, No, no it's not. And then I said, Are you sure? Are you sure it's not running? If it's running, why didn't you check it? And if it isn't, why aren't you looking at it? <sighs> then after that, they were really freaked out. They started wondering if I was having some sort of issues mentally, and they were really, really scared. Needless to say, I didn't get my supreme pizza that day, but I can definitely say I weirded someone out. Pringle got married when he was in the US Navy. A few weeks after his marriage, his submarine was going out to sea for two weeks before his major deployment. Pringle's wife was sending emails to him back and forth until around three days before he came back, so he got worried. On the way home, Pringle kept calling his cell phone until a man answered the phone and said, quit calling my girlfriend. When Pringle finally got home, his house was emptied. Everything was gone, all the furniture he bought, all the electronics, everything. He talked to his neighbors, he showed Pringle who the new man was since she had brought him to his house. Turned out Pringle's wife left him for a heroin junkie. A week later, Pringle had to go to his deployment in the Arctic. So one day, Andy Mations and her friend went to Six Flags. As soon as they walked through the entrance, they ran to the biggest ride where they were the first two people in line. At the front was an old man somewhere in his 50s, so once animations and her friend were at the front of the line, they asked the man if they could sit in the front of the ride. Gave them a weird stare and asked, Did you do anything bad to get here? They said, No. He then asked, Did you come here without your boyfriend knowing? They said, No. Did you come without your girlfriend knowing? They said, no. She looked over to a friend who gave him a weird angry stare. He took off his shades, looked at animations with a sinister look, making her real uncomfortable. He then said, well you came here without me knowing. Animations thought about the first question he'd asked, by the way her boyfriend knew she was coming. She assumed he was flirting with her, so he suddenly started repeatedly making a smoochy face at her when she wasn't looking. The friend kicked him in the leg and grabbed their arm. They both ran off, and one of the people behind them at the back of the line reported them to the main entrance. After a few minutes of hanging around, they were kicked out. Apparently the man had personality disorders, and it was normal for him to act like that. 